All right, welcome DevOps Soft Skills students. This is Michael Forrester, here to present just a little scenario, a few thoughts, some concepts, maybe even a few techniques that might be useful for you. This video is called Information Versus a Story. Here's the background. So a few years ago, I was asked to give a presentation on why our teams should pursue AWS certifications. This was not at Code Collab, by the way, another job. So I put together a slide deck and it was filled with generic statements and specific data, such as, you know, cloud adoption and, you know, how it can help with the company and it's very popular for operational offloading. It's matured. And as I presented, I could see the eyes of people just kind of glazing over. People were checking their phones, some were even dozing off. And I realized that I was throwing out, you know, information, but it was out of context, uninspiring, bland, not relevant. I wasn't really framing it in a way that engaged the audience and told a story or created a compelling narrative. It was nothing that really resonated with them. That experience taught me a very valuable lesson about the difference between simply presenting information and weaving a, a structured and compelling story or narratives. So as you probably know, and you'll hear me say this many times, information alone can be dry and uninspiring. Numbers, statistics, and raw facts, while important and evidentiary, can often fail to engage the audience on probably what is the most important level, meaning the emotional level. But when you take that same information and you weave it into a relevant contextual story, you can really create a profound impact on the way you deliver information. So the next time I had an opportunity to present to a, a similar group of engineers on the value of AWS and AWS certifications to them in their roles and the, subsequently to their companies, I took a different approach. I started by painting a picture of the rapidly evolving tech landscape and all the stuff that you needed to know to deploy because these were operations engineers. I talked about the maturity of cloud adoption and how you could offload things like repairing a hard drive, repairing a network switch, all of that could be eaten in this particular case by AWS, but you needed to have the skills to do it. I shared meaningful statistics about how cloud computing can save teams significant time and resources if you know how to use it, a lot of operational offloading, and it can be translated into tangible benefits for business agility, business innovation, etc. I told the story of a team that was bogged down with end-of-life tech sprawl of a much different on-premise infrastructure and hardware and how migrating to AWS transformed their operational offloading, reduced the time spent dealing with things that were kind of commodity, like failed hard drives and network switches and stuff, and focused on deploying applications and deploying services that were relevant for their business. And this reduced stress, boosted productivity, all things that they really wanted to hear, right? I highlighted how AWS expertise could not only help the business, but it could increase their value within an organization, leading to better opportunities and better compensation. So I framed it up not only as benefits for the business, but benefits for them as well. And by framing the information as a story, like a journey that had a problem to be solved, some color to the problem, and a resolution with some transformation, I was able to engage them on a deeper level so they could see themselves in the narrative and understand the real world impact and the value to them of pursuing AWS certifications. And you know, it doesn't necessarily take a full story. It could be three short sentences. For example, have you ever struggled to progress in your IT career because you've got the tech skills, but for some reason you're overlooked for management positions, project leadership positions, the way that you work, or maybe the way that you communicate? Is there a way that you could enhance your skills around soft skills so that you could further your career, help manage teams, help inspire teams, and help lead in a way that creates empowerment versus influence? Well, you know, we have this DevOps soft skills class that you could start as a Primer, like a beginning, if you will, to get started with the basic concepts of leadership, communication, fostering team collaboration, and continual learning to help not only further your career, but also further your management and ability to communicate with teams, with leaders, with employees. Three simple kind of statements, right? challenge, problem, some color to the problem, possible resolution. So it's just that simple, actually. Now, the thing that's important here is that stories have been a fundamental part of human communication since ancient times. So this framework allows us to relate to one another, to find common ground, and to convey complex ideas in a way that are consumable and resonate with the audience in question. So, you know, the question might be is like, how can you trans form your information into a captivating story, let's rehash a few key techniques. First, find the relatable human connection. Every good story has characters that you identify with or can relate to in some form or fashion. And so when presenting information, think about the audience and what kind of problems they have. And if you can, put a face and a name to the idea, to the numbers, to the data, whatever it is that you're presenting. For instance, instead of simply stating that employee turnover rates during Q1 of any particular year, especially in IT, 
are relatively high, mainly from a lack of growth and opportunity. Tell the story of Sarah, who is a talented team member, part of a pretty high-performing team, who ran into a ceiling of some type and wasn't able to grow in the role, and so she left because there was just a lack of growth opportunities. This makes the information personable and relatable. And when you start talking about a person, for example, named Sarah, they'll start thinking about how they can relate to that person, how they're a person. If I start talking about my sister and you have a sister, you'll start thinking thinking about your sister. If I start talking about my love of, you know, sports or hobbies or whatever, you'll start thinking about your sports and hobbies or whatever it is that you're into. That's the first part. Make it relatable. Second, create a narrative arc. Start with that whole problem, color, and resolution. So everything has a beginning, middle, and end. Has a conflict. It has some evolution or journey around the conflict, usually the acquisition of some new insight, and that insight leads to a resolution. So structure your information in a way that builds up some tension and some momentum and leads to a satisfying conclusion. Again, even if it's just three sentences, that's all you need. So you can start by setting the scene. What's the current state of affairs? Introduce the conflict, the challenge, the problem. Evolve the problem in some way. Maybe that gains some insight. And then how the resolution kind of addresses the challenges in question. So that's kind of the recommendation. Those, you know, apply it in a structured story-driven way. Make sure the details, the the numbers, the situation is relevant to your particular audience. If you're talking to engineers, speak to engineers. If you're talking to leaders, speak to leaders. You know, consider who you're engaging with and modify it in that way. So I'm Michael Forrester. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next scenario video.